Thank you. Uh, okay. The vertex shedding from a moving object in a fluid is a well-known phenomenon in fluid dynamics. So it is uh, fundamentally very interesting, and also for some industrial and then engineering applications, it is very practically important to know about the vertex shedding. So it's for such reasons, I'm with that the viscous uh, fluid, classical fluid, the vertex shedding has been studied very quite systematically. So people found that the very universal relation between that system parameters, such as uh, obstacle size and the flow speed and the frequent shedding, uh, shedding frequency and so on. And then we can ask a question that then, is that uh, uh, universal relation still holding for the, the superfluid system? Of course, I mean, the superfluid and the classical fluids are obviously different systems, but uh, in a viewpoint, for finding the correspondence between the classical fluid and the quantum fluid is very intriguing questions. And also, as the studying quantum vertex sheddings uh, probably help us to make a better understanding about the dissipation mechanism in the superfluid systems. So with those uh, motivation, we studied that uh, vertex shedding experiment with atomic superfluid gases, like this manner. Here's a schematic for our experiment. And then in this talk, I want to present uh, what we have observed in our experiment. OK, uh, this is the outline of this talk. I want to first briefly introduce what we know about the vertex shedding in the classical fluid. And then I will describe two experiments. Uh, in the first experiment, uh, we observed that the vertex cluster shedding out of the moving that the object in a BEC, and which is very close analogous, uh, closely analogous to what we know about uh, vertex shedding in the classical fluid. And the second experiment, we measured the critical velocity for vertex shedding in the BC BCS crossover region, and where we study about the uh, uh, critical velocity for vertex shedding uh, to that uh, the Landau critical velocity in this work. And I will give the summary. And this is my uh, wonderful colleagues who I worked with uh, together uh, for this project. Uh, Wu Jingguan, Sang Won So, uh, Jun Young Kim, and Ji Park, and the Palms of Go. Okay, so then let's go to the classical fluid first. Uh, here we have a 2D situation. The hard cylinder is placed in the middle of a stream. And here this image showed how the flow is developing around that uh, uh, cylinder. At low velocity, you have very smooth and nice laminar flow. And then if you increase the velocity a little bit, then vortex starts appearing here, like this manner, and periodically shed from the moving object from the left side and right side with alternating rotational sign. And eventually, when you have uh, increased the uh, flow velocity a lot, then you would have a turbulent flow in the downstream of the moving object here, like this. So in this kind of a laminar to turbulent flow, transitions is well characterized with that the so-called Raynaud numbers in classical fluid dynamics. Especially in the middle regions, you have a nice periodic vortex shedding regions. That is kind of a key distinctive feature of this kind of a laminar to turbulent uh, transition in the fluid dynamics. Also, this periodic vortex shedding is known as a von Karman vortex street in this fluid dynamics. Also, people find that, uh, found that the very interesting feature of this von Karman vortex street, which is about the relation between the object size and the vortex spacing. People define that uh, another dimensionless parameter named uh, uh, Strahl number nothing but the ratio between the, these two parameters, d over lambda over here. And then this is what we have for classical fluid. Over the large range of the Raynaud number, from 50 to the 10 to 5 or 10 to 7, the Strahl number is uh, almost constant at 0.2, which means that the uh, vertex spacing, which means the special periodicity of this vertex shedding, is about five times of a diameter of your moving object. So it's a kind of very universal behavior in terms of uh, uh, geometrical uh, features. So after knowing this kind of universal behavior of a classical fluid, uh, let's look at the superfluid systems. As you know that the superfluid is a very peculiar system. Uh, there's no frictions. We cannot define the Raynaud number at all. Uh, and also the vortices got quantized. So it's clear that the superfluid will show that the totally different flowing behavior around the moving object. But we know that when the object is moving inside the fluid, above a certain critical velocity, quantized vortices can be shed from the moving object. And also, it is natural to expect that the, having a turbulent flow when the moving velocity is very, very high in this system also. 
then it is natural to think about the, or a possibility of that having that the laminar to turbulent transition behavior in the superfluid system. And also, uh, we can think about the, the, if there is a, a kind of quantum version of a von Karman vortex rate in the superfluid. It's quite interesting questions. Uh, this question actually addressed by many numerical studies in the previous, uh, uh, for over the uh, many years. And then also many interesting results got reported. Uh, for example, here that the uh, uh, Saito group in uh, Japan presented a, a phase diagram of the, for quantum vortex shedding in the plane of obstacle size and uh, moving velocity. They could identify the many uh, vortex shedding resume over here. Interestingly, they found a very small parameter window where they can uh, pimp, uh, identify that the very periodic vortex cluster shedding. They named it as a quantum version of a von Karaman strait. The remarkable feature of that the periodic vortex shedding is that the vortex cluster is, consists of uh, two like sign vortices, like this manner. Here's the uh, uh, same sign of two vortex got shed, and then, then the opposite rotation, two vortex got shed, and repetitively like, like this manner. So, why the system prefers number two, uh, we have no ideas. But yeah, out of the numerical simulation, it turns out like this. And also, same behavior was observed by that uh, uh, Bradley groups in numerical works in Australia. And then, furthermore, they observed that, that this kind of a vortex cluster shedding is a keep being maintained even for the high uh, moving velocity, like this manner. Here, we call that the cluster charge number for that the number of vertices inside the one vortex clusters. So they see that the vertex cluster num is uh, number two, very regular at very low velocity, but for even high flow velocity, the still they have a periodic vortex cluster shedding, but the charge number, cluster charge number is uh, increasing with averaging increasing number, and but it's become irregular, kind of, kind of broad, distributed for the two or three or five, or something like that. Also, they analyze that the struggle numbers for their numerical data and then found this remarkable result. When they plot their struggle number as a function of this new parameter, they observed that all of data is, uh, looks like to collapse in a one universal line, like here. And then this very resembled that what we have for the classical fluid. So, and then the new parameter defined like this, u minus uc times d over kappa. Here uc is uh, critical velocity for vortex shedding. And then kappa is given by h bar over m, which has a parameter having the same dimension of the uh, viscosity up there. And then uh, from this uh, periodic shedding and also kind of this kind of universal behavior, dynamic similarity in the shedding behavior, they propose this parameter as a, a superfluid Raynaud number in terms of vortex shedding behaviors. It's quite an uh, interesting result. So largely motivated by this numerical result, we carried out uh, uh, vortex shedding experiment with atomic bosons and condensate. Uh, we prepared the oblate uh, BEC. In this oblate geometry, the vertex line is uh, automatically aligned at the uh, tight confining directions. And also as the line excitation is highly suppressed, then you would have uh, effectively two dimensional vortex dynamics in these systems. And then uh, we prepared the optical uh, obstacle as a conventional method is by focusing the Gaussian laser beam in the middle of a uh, sample. And then by moving, sweeping this laser beam uh, in the middle of a condensate, we could study the, the vortex shedding experiment with this setup. To clearly observe that the shedding behavior, we extended uh, the sweep distance as long as possible. So in our experiment, the sweep distance is about 150 micrometer, which is about the half of the condensate. And then with this setup, the critical velocity is uh, found to be at the 1.1 millimeter per second. And then this is what we have uh, above the critical velocity. Uh, just above the critical velocity, as you can see that in time of flight images of the condensate, you can see the singly charged vertex got shed in the condensate over there. But when we increase the velocity, you can see that the density depleted hole for the vertex is getting bigger, gets bigger, right? And this is uh, actually the vertex cluster consisting of uh, like sign vertices. Uh, during a time of flight, uh, same rotation vertices is going to be the density depleted hole, core region is going to be merged to each other and then appeared as one single large density depleted hole. 
So as you can see that the hole is getting bigger and bigger, and we can say that the, indeed the vertex cluster uh, consisting of the like sign vertices got shot from the moving object in a superfluid region. So we uh, characterize, we analyze that the charge distribution of the vertex cluster. Here is the histogram of the whole area as a function of uh, for various uh, moving obstacle velocity. You can see the multiple peak structures, right? So due to these features, we, can, we could assign that the charge number for, to each the vertex clusters. And then this is the resulting graph. Uh, you can see that uh, we can see that the evolution of a charge, vertex charge number distributions as a function of uh, moving velocity here. At low velocity, a singly charged vertex got shot, and then this region number two, you can see that the most of the vertex cluster uh, has a charge number two. It's a very regular uh, vertex cluster uh, shedding is, uh, occurs in these number two regions. And just above that, the increase the velocity a little bit more, then we uh, have this kind of uh, irregular, in terms of uh, vertex cluster charge number, is very irregular, but still we have a uh, uh, vertex cluster shedding regions over there. So out of this uh, observation, we can uh, present these pictures for the evolution of a quantum vertex shedding in a superfluid systems. Uh, below the critical velocity, you have a laminar flow without shedding any vertices. And then just above the critical velocity, you have a, some kind of periodic regular vertex shedding regions where that the vertex cluster is charged by two. And then above the high velocity, high velocity, you have uh, uh, still a vertex cluster shedding, but the charge number of vertex cluster become irregular. In that sense, we can see that it is a regular to irregular transition in terms of vertex shedding up there. It's quite consistent with that, the, what uh, numerical simulation predicted in the previous work. And also, we studied that the Strahl number uh, in our system. So assuming that periodic vertex sheddings, we can uh, estimate that the vertex spacing in this system like this manner. L is the sweep distance, NC is the vertex plus numbers. And then Strahl number is given like this, is uh, linearly proportional to that uh, vertex cluster number here. Uh, in our data, the Strahl cluster number is uh, saturating at four when we increase the moving velocity, which is corresponding to point 0.2 uh, in terms of the Strahl numbers. So it's very close to the classical value and also quite consistent with that the numerical simulation. And also, when we try that with a smaller obstacle, we could observe more vertex cluster, uh, which is consistent with that expression of a Strahl number appear there. So from this observation, we can say uh, we are very motivated about that uh, testing out that the universality of that, uh, the Strahl number and the new uh, superfluid Raynaud numbers relations in our VEC system. So currently we are thinking of having a 10 times bigger VECs and see to condensate with the various size of the diameters obstacle and then confirm that the, this universal behavior of a shedding behaviors. That would be interesting. Okay, now I want to move to the uh, second part of my talk, which is about the critical velocity for vertex sheddings. Uh, depending on the, how you think of your system's excitations, there's a two theoretical frame of thinking about the critical point of a vertex nucleation. Uh, I would call the first one is a global approach, second one is a local approach. In a global approach, you think about the whole system, and then you can think about the energy and the momentum of your vertex state. And then in the frame co-moving with the moving object under after the Galilean transformation, you have to think about this quantity. It's ED minus PD times V. Here's ED, PD is energy and the momentum of the vortex state you are, you are interested in. Then if this quantity is uh, become negative, then that means that the, it is energetically favorable to have that vortex state. Then system make a transition from the vortex free state to the vortex state through the thermal activations or macroscopic quantum tunneling. And then out of this argument, I mean, the critical velocity is given usually like this manner. The features is the one of the D dependency. Here's the D is the diameter of the moving object, which means the, your di object's diameter is bigger, then you would have a lower critical velocity. 
Actually, this type of uh, thinking has been used by the Feynman when he estimated about the critical velocity for superfluid helium you know, flowing in a long uh, channel geometries to explain the low critical velocity at that time. On the other hand, there is a local description for the nu vortex nucleation like this. Uh, simply is uh, applying it uh, locally, the lambda criterion uh, for the dissipation in the superfluid system. In, for the weakly interacting uh, bosonic superfluid, so lambda critical velocity is given by the speed of sound. So it's a local lambda criterion describes something like this. Uh, when you have a moving of the inner superfluid, you have uh, some kind of uh, superfluid uh, flow uh, distributions. But locally, if the local speed of flu uh, superfluid flow speed is exceeds the local speed of sound, then that area becomes dissipative and then acting as a seeding area for, to form that the rotational flow in your system. So basically, that kind of a scenario has been supported by many numerical simulations and also uh, through that uh, thorough analysis, analytic studies, including the quantum pressure terms, uh, people found that, that the critical velocity for vortex shedding for the large hard cylinder is about 40% of uh, uh, speed of sound. The previous result is uh, generally uh, seems to be uh, supporting that the local Landau criterion descriptions. Uh, actually, one of the dependence has not been observed in experiment. And also, when you increase the speed of sound over the system, then you end up with a higher critical velocity for vertex shedding. But uh, I would say that there is no complete uh, comparison between theory and experiment yet in terms of vertex shedding critical velocity. Because sometimes we have to recall that the three-dimensional situations, also density inhomogeneity, and uh, many things. And then also it's practically impossible to precisely characterize the beam shape in your system and so on. So in that situation, I would say that the, the relation between the critical velocity for vertex shedding and the lambda critical velocity is not completely understood yet. Here, let me be clear about that. I'm talking about the critical velocity for vortex shedding, not the general dissipations uh, in the superfluid system. Okay, then in that kind of situations, I think that the strongly interacting Fermi gas uh, gives us a nice opportunity to study that the microscopic aspect of the vortex nucleation. As you, can, as you know, that uh, in this system, we can address the BC, BCS crossover rhythm, and clearly the Landau critical velocity changes from that uh, uh, changed like uh, phonon nature to the pair breaking nature in this system. So in the BC side, lambda critical velocity is a, is a, uh, the responsible microscopic excitation is phonon in BC side, but in the BCS side, you have a pair breaking mechanism. So if you study the quantum vertex shedding uh, in over this BC, BCS crossover rhythm, then we might have a chance to confirm or verify that, uh, that kind of local lambda criterion description in the so we prepared, again, the oblate uh, Fermi gases uh, like this. And the diameter is about 500 micrometer. And the obstacle size is about uh, 10 micrometer, which is much larger than the one of KF. Then, then we can consider that this obstacle as a large obstacle for our systems. And then we measure that uh, probability of observing the vertices as function of the sweep distances, uh, sweep velocity, like this manner and then fit that data as with the sigmoidal fit, then we determine the, the critical velocity at the point where we have a 50% of probability of a vortex occurrence in this system. And this is a series of images when we increase the vortex obstacle velocity here. And then I want to emphasize that uh, the critical velocity cannot be compared directly to the lambda critical velocity because uh, for a finite length sweep, the your critical velocity would be the much uh, going to be larger than the true critical velocity for vortex shedding. So uh, thinking about the period of vortex shedding or finite energy requirement for generating vortex dipole moment, dipole uh, excitations, I think it's the, it is fair to compare the critical velocity in the limit of L infinity to the Landau critical velocity. So in that manner, we measured the critical velocity as a function of the sweep distances and then extracting that the L infinity limit values out of this measurement. And then this is the result, what we have over the BCS, BC, BCS crossover here, and very rich. And then 
uh, time short. So, uh, and many interesting feature. First, uh, critical velocity increases with decreasing L, which is uh, as we expected. And then second, the increasing rate of VC is uh, highest uh, near the unitarity. That is, I think, is very consistent with the recent demonstration of that the robustness of Fermi superfluid in a unitary rhythm with the uh, Josephson junction experiment. And also, also we, surprisingly, we found that uh, very, very short uh, sweep distances, the critical velocity for vortex shading is the, even above the speed of sound. This is getting a supersonic rhythm and superfluid dynamics quite also is interesting too. There's many interesting features, but I don't want to be distracted from our original intention, which is about this uh, VC uh, of L dependency. So to understand that uh, L dependency of VC, we uh, make uh, some very simple dissipation model. Here's the power, dissipating power of the obstacle sweeping is uh, assumed like this, the linear fashions. Uh, linearly proportions the velocity difference from the V minus VC0. This VC0 is the uh, ideal, true critical velocity for vortex shedding in our system. And then thinking about the energy requirement for vortex dipole generation, you can uh, uh, write up this kind of uh, equations, and then you end up with this kind of expression for your uh, critical velocity. One of the VC can be expressed as a function of the one of L here. Right? And then this is uh, what we have in the BEC side. We plotted our experiment data uh, in the plane of one of VC and the one of VL, one of, one of, one of L, and then it's quite good. I mean, it showed that the linear dependency, linear relations in this data set, and then we can fit it like a linear fit, and then using the y-intercept of this linear fit, we can extract the VC0, which is the kind of uh, L infinity limit of uh, critical velocities. But another surprising uh, to me is that uh, this model is cannot explain that uh, what we have over the BCS, BCS across the reason. It's kind of a positively surprising uh, uh, result. Anything new is uh, interesting. Uh, but the behavior is not understood quite clearly uh, currently yet. Uh, it, so, it showed a sudden bimodal behavior in this uh, type of uh, graph. And this is a uh, kink area is about uh, two times of uh, obstacle diameters. And then, but still, the long L sweep, long sweep distance regime, uh, which show that almost a linear uh, behavior. So we, we keep assuming that the linear behavior of the critical velocity in this long sweep distance uh, area. And then uh, still, we can get that uh, y intercept, we interpreted this y intercept value as a true uh, critical velocity for that onset of a dissipation. And then out of this, uh, this is the final data over the BCS, BCS cross rhythm, and then the extracted VC0 is closely followed at the trend of a Landau critical velocity. So out of this observation, we can say that uh, our results uh, in, uh, support the local Landau criterion description for the vertex nucleation. Also, we can say that the power breaking mechanism also got involved in the vertex nucleation dynamics in the BCS uh, limit. Okay, so this is a summary. Uh, uh, in the first experiment, we observed the vortex cluster shedding, which is very analogous to the, the classical fluid behavior. And in the second experiment, we just uh, studied the BCS, BEC reason, vortex dynamics, and then uh, obtained the experimental evidence to support that the local lambda criterion descriptions. In the future experiment, we want to test out the universality, uh, dynamic similarity of shedding behavior by changing the diameter and then sweep distances also. And also, we want to understand more about the, the bimodal behavior of VC of L. And then probably we can extend that to the superfluid, spin of superfluid system, where the mass and spin superflow uh, existing simultaneously over there. So before finishing the, my talk, I want to advertise our poster presentation tomorrow. Uh, poster number 32, where the uh, Zhang Wo Han will present about our recent realization of uh, the synthetic cold tube with the uh, iterable atoms in this poster presentation. Please come to him if you're interested. And then uh, thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.